This is Jack Jackson again. We're going to look at generalizing the things that we have seen in the last couple of videos. So in the last couple of videos we were looking at an introductory uh, exploration where we looked at velocities and times given a table of that. And we were able to compute estimates of the distance traveled and we were able to visualize that graphically. Now we're going to look at this process in general uh, with an arbitrary function f of x defined on an interval a to b. And so we're going to be looking at ways of estimating that. And the techniques we have already encountered are called right Riemann sums and left Riemann sums, named after Bernard Riemann, who's an early 19th century mathematician who developed uh, this process. So we want to divide an interval uh, of x values, or input values, a, b, into n pieces of equal width delta x. So the first question is what's the width of the interval? Well, if the interval goes from a to b, the width of that is just b minus a. Then what would be a formula for delta x in terms of a, b, and n? Well, you take a width of b minus a and divide it into n equal pieces. Each one of them will have size b minus a over n. So delta x then is given by the formula b minus a over n. And so notice it's, uh, it's going to depend on how wide the interval is overall, and then it's going to depend on the, uh, how many intervals we have for n. So for each k, uh, 1, 2, 3, up to n, we want x sub k to be the x value at the right end of the kth subinterval. So can we come up with a formula for x sub k? Now k is just an index variable or a counting variable that counts which rectangle we're in. Remember we're dividing this thing up into sub rectangles or this sub intervals with a rectangle for each one. And so we're going to have a rectangle for the first interval, the second interval, and third interval, and so forth. And so the k just counts which rectangle we're on. So x1, that's going to be a rectangle. Uh, well, it's going to be the x value at the right side of the first interval, at the right side of the first rectangle. So to get there, we start at a on the left side of the first rectangle, and we move to the right by delta x. So x1 is a plus delta x. So similarly, we move delta x from x1 to get to x2. So x2 is x1 plus delta x, or in other words, a plus delta x plus delta x, which is a plus two delta x's. So in, and so on, so forth, and so on. So in general, we come up with a formula x sub k equals a plus k delta x. So notice if you plug in k is zero, this would make x sub zero just a, which is not used for a right Riemann sum, but we will use it for a left Riemann sum. And x sub two, x sub n, is uh, is b, not x sub 2, but x sub n. The last one is b. Okay. Now, what's the general formula for a right Riemann sum on that interval? Well, first of all, to define this formula, we need to define these symbols. So delta x is going to be b minus a over n, and x sub k is a plus k delta x, is just like we did. And then what we want to do is we want to take the f value at each one of these x sub k's, which is a height of a rectangle, multiplied by our delta x, which is our width of a rectangle, and each one of these f of x sub k's times delta x will be the area of one rectangle. Then we want to add up all of those rectangles. So here, and we want to do this for the k's going from 1 up to n. So here we're using a capital Greek letter sigma, which is like a Greek S, standing for sum. So it means to add them up or sum them up. So we're taking each of these products, which are areas of rectangles, and adding them up. Uh, And so we start by substituting, what this notation means is we start by substituting in the lowest number here for k in place of k, work out this formula. Then we substitute, then we go up one, k equals two, substitute in. Then k equals three and so forth, ending with k equals n. And then we add up all those. Just for a simple example of summation notation, let's look at the following example. So if we sum up k squared from k equals two to five, this means you take this formula, 
plug in 2, so that's 2 square, plug in 3, 3 square, plug in 4, 4 square, plug in 5, 5 square, where do we end? At 5, where do we start? At 2. And then what do we do with these numbers, which are 4, 9, 16, and 25? We are add them up, we sum them. And so, of course, when you add those together, you get uh, 54. Okay? So it's just an example of how summation notation works. So, for example, we would see that uh, delta x is b minus a over n, x sub k is a plus k delta x's, and r sub n, then, is the sum from k equals 1 to n of f of x sub k times delta x. Now remember, so this means fx1 times delta x plus fx2 times delta x plus f of x3 times delta x, and so on, ending, ending up with f of xn delta x. And of course, x1 is a plus 1 delta x, f, a, x2 is a plus 2 delta x, and so forth. Okay, And of course, we could even go further, delta x is b minus a over n. And so in the final version, we see uh, this right Riemann sum written out in terms of a, b, and n, and then the formula f. Uh, and of course, we could have rewritten all these delta x's as b minus a over n uh, for them as well if we wanted to. But I don't want to think of it in terms of this last part. I'm going to think of it just in terms of this summation notation. So how could we illustrate this on a graph? So for an example, I'm going to use the formula f of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 48. And so I'm going to graph that, and I'm going to let n be, say, 6. Okay? So let's see if we can figure out what's happening here. First of all, uh, we're going to go from a to b. Now, what's a and b, a and b going to be? Let's say um, 0. Let's see, what did I have it here? Looks like I've got it going from, z from 1 to 5, it looks like. So if we go from 1 to 5, uh, A is 1, B is 5. Okay? But here I'm not really thinking about that. In I, don't, I want to think of it more in terms of variables. So if we think of it, this red graph here is our curve, Y equals F of X. Our left endpoint is A, whatever A might be. That's also known as X sub 0. And the right endpoint of the whole thing is B, which is X sub N. And, of course, the amount we move over each time here is delta x. So we go across, this width here across here is delta x. And so the x1 is at the right end of the first rectangle, and that's going to be a plus delta x. And if we go a plus 2 delta x's, we get over here to x2, and a plus 3 delta x's gives over the x3 and so forth. a plus n delta, L delta x's gives you the right end point, uh, which is b. And so each one of these, starting with x1, and then x2 and x3, is the right end of the first, second, third rectangle, and so forth. So then what we do to find the height is we take that x value and do f of that, which is the height on the curve here, and that's f of x1. So then you take that f of x1 times that delta x, and you've got the area of that first rectangle. Similarly, on the next rectangle, we take x2, which is a plus 2 delta x, take its height, f of that x2 will be the height of the curve there on the right end, which is the height of the rectangle, multiply by the width delta x, and we get the area there. We do this for all of these things all the way up to the top one, however many there might be. I mean, here we have six, but we could have one or two or three or four, any, any, any natural number. We could do this for a hundred times or whatever. Okay, and so that's what we have. If we want to do the left Riemann sum, then we need to make sure that instead of the height going at the right end, we need to go at the left end, which, which, which means we basically do the same thing, but we want to use, instead of using x1, x2, x3 up to xn, we want to use x0, x1, x2, x3 up to, up to this one, which is xn minus 1. So in fact, with the same definition of delta x and xk that we use for a right Riemann sum, we can have exactly the same formula, f of xk times delta x, except that we run our summation from k equals 0 to n minus 1, and that gives you a left Riemann sum. So now, that's basically defining left and right Riemann sums. So what we want to do in our next video is use this to actually define the definite integral, which is one of the two really big 
parts of calculus.